This video brought to you by jadedpainting.com. If you need your miniatures painted to a tabletop standard, check out jadedpainting.com. Hey everyone, welcome to another Dark Potential painting tutorial. My name is Jay, and today I'll be showing you how to paint this Petrov Morales Corporation Director, inspired by the artwork on www.darkpotential.com. I began by priming the model gray. As with the other Dark Potential models, there are a lot of fine details on this model, so take your time and do very thin layers of primer and make sure to use thin paints. I started on all the flesh areas of the model using rat skin flesh, one of the new base colors from the Citadel range. I did thin it a little bit using paint thinner, so about two parts rat skin flesh for one part paint thinner. And this will make sure that you keep all those really nice details on all the skin areas, especially on the face with the lips and the eyes and the ears. By thinning your paint, you're preventing it from building up in certain areas and removing these awesome details. Plus, rat skin flesh gives an excellent coverage over all these gray areas, and that is why I went with the gray primer as opposed to a black primer. For the clothing for this tutorial, I tried to go with a more realistic color scheme and less fantastic than most fantasy games that are in the future. The key to this step is to get really nice, even coverage over all the skin areas. If at first, after one coat, you don't have a nice, even coverage, feel free to do a second one and keep repeating until you feel that the skin tone is consistent and even across all the skin areas. Usually, this is when I would do a shading, but in this case, I decided to go with the first highlight before the shading, and therefore I covered all the areas with Bestigor Flesh, the first layer color in the Citadel range associated with the base color, Ratskin Flesh. Once again, for this highlight, I tried to cover all of the surface of the skin, including the recesses, which I will give a shading in just a moment. And now that a lighter skin tone has been based over the entire skin area, I gave all the skin a Rakeland Flesh Shade. For this shading, I watered down a little bit by about two parts Flesh Shade to one part water. That way it gets in the recesses and gives it some nice detail and shading, but doesn't tint all the skin surface so much that it looks a little cartoony. So the goal is just to move around the shade a little bit over the surface and get into the recesses and provide just the right amount of detail. When the shade was dry, I did a, another highlight using the same Bestigor flesh. For this highlight, I basically used an overbrush technique, focusing on all the raised areas and leaving the recesses the really nice Raiklin shaded Bestigor flesh areas. If done properly and well, this will create a really nice gradient of colors and it'll look quasi-realistic. And as with the previous steps, remember to thin down your paints. Though Best Score Flesh is a layer color and tends to be thinner anyway, but I just recommend adding a little bit of paint thinner to it so that you get a very nice consistency and you get a nice blending of these colors. I then repeated the process with a one-to-one -one mix of Ungor Flesh and Bestigor Flesh. For this step, I tried to focus only on the raised areas and only on the highest points of each raised area, such as the tops of the muscles and the nose, the eyebrows, and all the very most raised areas. With each highlight, you just want to focus on less and less of the areas that you covered in the previous step. Luckily, that also means that with each step, it gets quicker and quicker and easier and easier to do. The key is just to do a nice blending and build up gradually so it doesn't look too extreme. And finally, I did one more highlight on the very tips in the highest areas possible with Ungor Flesh. Now that the skin is done, 
I painted all the hair a nice dark reddish brown Mornfang brown once again by Games Workshop. I even decided to add a little bit more detail so I added some sideburns just in front of each ear and I made sure to paint the back of the head as well so that all the hair really blends nicely together. And to add some depth to the hair I gave it all an Agrax Earthshade a really awesome brown shade from Games Workshop. And this will get in the recesses and darken them so the hair will have a little bit more detail that the eye can pick up on. As mentioned earlier, I decided to go with a more realistic dark clothing scheme that is less bright and fantastic looking. So I base coated all of the jacket and the pants at Ministratum Grey. For these areas, we're going to build up from dark grays to a light gray to get a nice blend that would represent the corporation. As with the previous base coats, the goal is to get nice, even coverage over all the areas before proceeding to the next step. And I also diluted the Administratum Gray with paint thinner again so that I didn't ruin the nice details of the pants and the clothing. The next step then would obviously be to provide some shading in these areas, so I gave them all a watered down Nuln Oil shade. This shading will darken all the recesses, which are very apparent on the pants as you can see here, and on the jacket, and then we'll go over them later with some highlights and build up a nice gradient of grays so that you can clearly see the recesses and the raised areas from a good distance. And with this step nearing completion, we can turn our attention to giving some nice highlights on this clothing and focusing on all the blue areas of the model. 